the Dim Din Podcast, a safe space to talk about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations. Join us for conversations and stories that explore how embracing our differences leads to a balanced, strong, and harmonious world. Welcome to the Dim Din Podcast, your safe space to have conversations about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations amongst Africans here in the diaspora. I am your host, Aunt Becca, AKA the Syrian Indian. Last week, we brought you part one of our conversation on grief and how we um, handle grief and loss here in the diaspora as Africans who are far from home. This week, we're bringing you part two. For a small recap, Last week, we talked about what the problem was and a little bit about what inspires us, my fathers and myself, to have this conversation at this time. You heard from each and every one of our guests. And today, we're bringing you the second part, second and final part of this conversation. As you all know, it is an emotional conversation, so please, Take care of yourself as you watch. I think that will definitely take us then into our next question, um, because I'd like for us to explore. We've all had to mourn and like go through a different kind of healing process, and we're all at different stages in those healing process. And I'd like for us to like center that conversation this conversation on that healing sort of like journey and some of the resources that are available to us or we should create Create. Mm -hmm. to support us as individuals who um, are dealing with some of these challenging experiences in a country where we were not born, right? I know growing up, uh, for me, when someone dies, even from like 10 houses away, you hear the sound of crying Mm -hmm. first. They're wailing and you run to that place. Like we all run in like numbers to go and see what's happening and how to support. Whereas here I feel like even when someone's crying, you try to make it as civilized as possible, (laughs) right? Not to make too much noise, right? (laughs) Yeah. Um, Because it's it's a lot different over here. Like, I know for me, the time it hit me most, Mm -hmm. especially with my grandpa's death, was when, because everything was broadcasted online just for those of us who were not there to be able to to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. But when I saw the casket coming in, I saw my whole family was there. And even though at at the time I thought it was best I stayed back, when I saw everybody and I wasn't there, I felt a little bit of guilt. I felt like, oh, I'm... I don't have the time or the chance to say goodbye. Right. And everything just like stinked in for me. Yeah. And that was when I cried, the first yeah. time I cried. So I am still going through my healing journey Yeah. for all three and all the people that I have lost. But I want to hear from each and every one of you. I'll start with you, yeah. Mr. Kimo. Where would you say you're at in that healing journey? And what did you do? to help you get to where you're at right now. You know, uh, as uh, I think uh, you said that uh, grieving and the healing process sometimes is personal Mm -hmm. and everybody's at different stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Elder here talked about um, uh, uh, the aspect of uh, the community and and what I could remember in our traditional uh, as I said, I think in a privileged conversation, I'm from a ruling family. And uh, the belief of um, the afterlife is not probably Christian belief. Mm. Because traditionally, some of our kings and chiefs were actually accompanied with certain utensils or certain things they were using because they are hoping that they are going somewhere. So the traditional Africa, because I did a paper in school, the Thai religion, you know, when usually Christianity or Islam say we're pagan, Africans were pagans, we were not. We had a belief 
Mm. We, were b we believe in something, yet Christianity through Jesus Christ, Islam through Muhammad, but we had that spiritual uh, knowledge, believing that there is something supreme. So if we worship the, the rivers, it's not a river per se, literally the river, but the, the aspect that gives that this, the spiritual thing that gives that river the ability is what we're worshiping. So Africans were not pagan. Mm -hmm. We had a belief in something. So we had that belief that if somebody passed away, and it's still so practiced in my, my family, my culture, wherein some people will still be uh, sent away with, um, with uh, certain aspects uh, uh, of uh, things they were using before in this, in this earthly world. Uh, <coughs> grieving, you have the, the community, you have the culture, mm -hmm. Yet, in the diaspora, it's totally different. When we're in the diaspora, when you lose somebody uh, back home, you have the whole family. And uh, you talked about mourning for 90 days. People wear uh, the stuff for 90 days. Mm -hmm. Here, it's a little bit difficult. You gotta go to work, you gotta find, you gotta pay bills, you gotta do all those things. Mm -hmm. To be there and wait for that is really, really hard in the diaspora because there are other realities. We may have the assumptions and perceptions, but when reality hits, you yes. need to make adjustments Absolutely. to actually uh, see how you can balance the two. Mm -hmm. uh, when I lost my son, as I said, I used to cancel. I used to help people mm -hmm. to go through that. I used to bring the community together to help help uh, uh, people go through l grief and loss. But when it hit me, it's totally different. Uh, it took me time. Uh, <coughs> Sometimes I'll be at work. I may be going through certain things and something reminds me of my son. Then my day is over. I'm not able to perform. I'm not able to do things. Mm -hmm. I, of course, I had cancel from church. Sometimes in this, uh, a church is also a community of family, mm -hmm. wherein you have people who supports you in the time of need, just like my cultural community will do as well. So you have all this. I have friends, close friends who support you. I have my wife who supports me. And in your case, you say you have your children who are helping you with dealing with all that. But when you, uh, the, the, the relationship between you and the person you're losing determines how long you grieve and how you grieve. I still grieve my son. I grieve my mom until my daughter was born. Mm. I named my daughter my mom's name, and that was the time I let go of the departing mom who was passed away years back. Mm. So it is personal, grieving is personal, and it takes time. For me, uh, it was a affecting my day-to-day -day activities. Mm -hmm. The guilt of probably not being able to bring my son over. The guilt that uh, probably I should have done more. Uh, even though, so, <coughs> and sometimes we, we, things have evolved. Uh, technology or medicine or anything, science have changed. What we used to, the things we used to know or for didn't know of in science and technology and medicine years back. Sickle cell, mm -hmm. people were dying of sickle cell because they didn't know. Today, people are not dying because mm -hmm. what we know now is totally different from what we know then about sickle cell, so an example. So grieving is also the same. Mm -hmm. We have our culture, we still have that part of it. But what I'll say is, it was affecting my ability to perform. It was uh, affecting my ability to do my work. But I have my support of my, my, my work and family and community and, and everybody. 
But yet, in my long time, I was crying every day, mm -hmm. and I still so do. Loss is basically it's the relationship you have. He was my first son, and we have intimacy. You know how I do with my kids, how I love my children. Mm -hmm. I spend every time with my children. So one thing that uh, started helping me deal with that is actually seeking professional counseling. And for me, I will say that is important to me sometimes. It's not just that. You can do that. It helps you to open up some other avenues that help you deal with your loss. Uh, what I mean by that professional counseling, many people in their workplaces do have that. And I have been strong helping people to deal with loss, but I was not able to help myself. Even though I have a community behind me, I have a family behind me. I have not here only, back home. I went to bury my son, and that was fine because the community and family were all there. But in my long time, I have something, a void. I have, in, in our culture, we usually say that uh, it is good for the kids to bury their parent, not the, other way. not the other way around. I had to bury my son at, I think, 26 years old mm -hmm. uh, when he passed away. So I, speak, I seek professional counseling, and what that did to me was to explore. They allow you to talk. Sometimes, uh, in any situation, what I lost or some things, if you don't have the ability to talk and open, you're not able to deal with the situation. So how I dealt with that is I, the counselor, we sat down and talked about, tell me about your son, tell me about your relationship, tell me what has been going on. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I sent him to a boarding school so that he get the experience. We were close, even though we were apart. Mm -hmm. The only thing that was missing was the physical. So it helped me to understand what I have done for him, what I was doing for him, and... Uh, Nighting all that, then that guilt that I had that was haunting me, that I, I, w I didn't do much, went away because oh, I was beautiful. feeling guilty. But when we started looking back it's to what, what I have been doing, I call him almost every day or every week. Mm -hmm. I send him money all the time, every month. I send to provide him everything. When people are traveling from here to Sierra Leone, I will put things and send with uh, them to go because my family goes uh, frequently. Uh, so I have been doing things. Mm -hmm. Not that it's the only thing, even if he was here, probably I was even doing more when he was the only one out there than when he was here. But the, the fact that I, I was not able, and uh, one of the things that uh, uh, during the counseling that helped not only S knowing that I have actually done a lot for him, mm -hmm. but uh, the fact that uh, death, we don't control. No, it comes. it comes. We don't control death. He would have been here and still die. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, what happened to that young 29-year-old who was killed by police. Yeah. He's not expecting the parents and family were not expecting that. Uh, probably if he was uh, somewhere else, that would not have happened, mm -hmm. wherein probably uh, the police will not be there. But uh, uh, so that we can control. He so would have no been there. Yeah. So it's the acceptance right. that, uh, as uh, uh, Neil was saying, and I know some will say in the Bible, as a Christian, it says there's time. Uh, 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 it is better to be uh, to die That's than to be born. Mm -hmm. Because when you are born, you are born into the troubles of this world. Right. But when you die, 
all these other things is only the people you leave behind that actually feel that pain. You don't feel anything anymore. And so that's, that's why the saying that uh, uh, the, 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 the scripture says that it's better to die than to be born because you're coming into the troubles of the world, mm -hmm. but when you die, you're, you're actually die. departing those troubles that are in this world. Yeah. So in my case, uh, counseling helped, Help. community helped, Help. uh, uh, my family helped, and my workmate helped me deal with my loss yes. and grief. And I think uh, it's a combination. Okay. So it is always uh, let, let, uh, up to the individual how they are able to deal with. Some people will just numb it. But uh, if you really want to uh, get free of it, definitely there are different ways that uh, people can deal with grief. Beautiful, beautiful. So just therapy helping you come to acceptance and um, you making peace with that guilt. Um, thank you for sharing that and thanks for choosing to be vulnerable with us as well. We do appreciate that. And I know that we are um, out of time, but I still want to hear from you, Daddy, yeah. and um, hear from you, me. But um, I want to hear from you, like, um, with regards to, you said your workplace was very supportive, mm -hmm. right? I'm asking you to take all the time you need. And the workplace is definitely fast, uh, part of the system. So being part of the system here and, s and hearing some of the challenges that we all went through with regards to a specific type of um, journeys, what would you say to the system we need as um, immigrants in this part of the world or, or, or diasporans to feel supported through this time or when we go through grief? Thank you, good question. Um, with regards to that workplace support, mm -hmm. it's quite ex exciting. I remember when I thought, okay, I was back at work mm -hmm. after I've gone through all this grieving. Mm -hmm. And there was a day I was having my one-to-one -one with my boss. And she looked at me. She knew I was not the person that I used to be, work with. And she even insisted, I'm going to give you one more week <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> she gave me a whole week off again to just go and look after myself. And But again, that brings me to the question about us as Africans, because our audience, I'm hoping most of them will be Africans. And we need to figure out a way we can collaborate and see how we can support one another. Mm -hmm. There is this saying, you can take the African out of Africa but you can never take Africa mm. out of the Africa. No. And the no. thing is, when we transit from Africa to this part of the world, we go through a lot of emotional, and we come, come into certain cultures, and sometimes we even feel as if we are not the Africans. I think Elder Nee mentioned that sometime earlier on, mm -hmm. when he said sometimes we tend to ignore mm -hmm. the teachings of our elders yeah. Yeah. and want to try different things. And in doing so, we always end up coming back to take, accept what we've been running away from. Mm -hmm. Now, if we, the reason why grieving back in Africa is better managed, and we feel as if when we're here, we don't have the support. We don't have the support because we do not make the time and the effort to create that supporting circle mm -hmm. among ourselves. Mm -hmm. We tend to just want to go independent and everybody doing their own thing mm -hmm. in their own way. Mm -hmm. There are many African families who do not even take the time to even transfer that knowledge of, especially those that came from Africa and then move into the diaspora. We have multiple tasks. One of those is how do we ensure that personally we don't ignore those cultural Cultures. teachings mm -hmm. from back home? And then how do we ensure that our children that are around us Understand. grasp and understand yeah. that, uh, that, that cultural thing. Mm -hmm. Because if we do not transfer that knowledge to them, there will come a time when, and they will never be considered as non-Africans. Even if they are born here. They are always mm -hmm. Africans. <laughs> they will always be African first. They have the stamp. As they should. The stamp of <laughs> Africa we mm -hmm. all carry. Mm -hmm. You cannot shift away from that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a waste of time if you do not understand the values of who you are mm -hmm. or what makes you who you are. Mm -hmm. Because then you find yourself in situations where you're not able to identify yourself based on the identity you carry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Grieving is important for us to be able to share with our children how we do it back home. Mm -hmm. In Africa, we believe that when people die, <laughs> they, they go to the hereafter. Mm -hmm. 
And there is a hereafter, the land of our ancestors. We hear that most of the time. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are certain places where cemeteries are. People don't just go there voluntarily yeah, because no. you believe there are spirits there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have dreams about people you've lost. Yes, we dream all the time. But it depends on your attachment to those people. That contributes to how you're able to manage the grieving process, process. going forward. Mm -hmm. And I'm still grieving. Like, it's coming close, less than a week from now, it will be the first anniversary of my dad's passing. I think about that. Sometimes I sit here and say, oh, last year, this time I was in, I was in McKinney. And about this time, I was actually in the hospital. No, we had actually discharged from the hospital. We were home. Mm -hmm. I go through all of those emotions. I watch the video clips and everything that I, uh, I took back there. So the memories are going to there. The one thing we need to also pass on to our family members back in the diaspora is about building those relationships. Because mm -hmm. yeah. when you leave Africa and you're here, like yeah. Elder Nee said, when you're traveling, people cry. Because that's like another kind of a departure, departure. like a loss. Mm -hmm. I don't know when I will see you again. Mm -hmm. My wife and I, I recall when my mom would always say, she'll cry when we're leaving, saying, maybe this is the last time I'm going to see you. Mm -hmm. I may not see you again. You may not come back and find me here. That was, a, it was one of the last statements you always say whenever we, we go on holidays. Mm -hmm. So coming back here, building those relationships, creating those memories, doing things that will reduce the guilt in you, especially for people that matter to you when they are around. Because once you lose them, like my brother was saying here, the first thing that comes to your mind is a lot of questions. And you are not going to be able to validate yourself. Yeah. That is where family comes in. Because mm -hmm. when you have that close-knit family circle, people know what you're doing. And they will be the ones that will start telling you, which is the equivalent of therapy. Yeah. They will tell you, you did your best. Yeah. You did this. You did that. You did this. And those answers help to help. validate yeah. and make you not feel horrible or miserable. Because you know death you cannot control. Mm -hmm. But what you worry about is, did I do enough? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's where family comes in. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I'll stop there. Did I send Beautiful. that money? Beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, me, we mm -hmm. are ending with you. We've had all oh, we are the knowledge bites. <laughs> 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 We've had all the knowledge bites. <laughs> but you had some valuable um pieces to say about how to traditionally mourn and, and grieve as Africans um, and you made reference to food like what we eat and those pieces um, I'd like for you to please give us a couple um, of those things that you think we as Africans need to aspire. either um, continue doing or to start doing to help us go through our healing journey within that lens? Well, um, I think what I am particularly concerned with mm -hmm. is not those of us who may have the necessary support network to help us when we are in those situations, mm -hmm. but those who may not have people as we do to help them. Because my responsibility mm -hmm. is to help those who cannot help themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's the human responsibility. And those are some of the things that I look at. I've experienced this thing. This is how painful it was. How could I help others who, who may have this similar situation mm -hmm. moving forward? So we have a responsibility to create um, avenue um, for people who will experience um, yes. this loss. Uh, when I lost my daughter, um, not only I was feeling that I was responsible for her death, the fact that I have taken her out of her land to a new land, and I was also wounded by the fact that my daughter is going to be buried in a strange land. Mm. And so yeah. that is something very powerful for we as immigrants, that you travel to somewhere to make your life better, and then you die in the process. 
Now that trauma is why I'm saying that whatever help we may get, it has to be culturally relevant. Mm. Culturally because relevant. if you are average Canadian, you will not understand the pain yeah. that I have died in a strange land. It's basically like dying in captivity. When a person dies in captivity, it's very painful. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why when there is war, the war in Vietnam, Americans are still asking the Vietnam to release, even if a person born can be brought home for you to get closure. And you only get that closure when the cultural, your belief system yeah. is applied. So I think I heard you mention uh, there are cultures that when people die, they will shave your hair, mm -hmm. some of them. Yeah. Uh, some of them, they will kill a domestic animal. Yeah. Um, some of them, you will wear black for yeah, certain amount of days. Yeah. These are some of the things that help us to recover quicker. Um, when my daughter died, I went to Toronto. I went to the funeral home, and my daughter was going out on a Saturday, so she done her hair. You know, black woman does her hair, beauty comes in. Mm -hmm. And then she passed the night before the Saturday. Oh. So when I went to the funeral home with one of my daughters, I, she was lying there, beautiful, gorgeous, and I was speaking to her. Now, if you don't understand the culture, you may think, this guy is crazy. Yeah. But I know where I'm coming from. And I'm speaking to her, it's about me, the living. And I'm looking at her, she was dressed like she's ready to go out. So I applied some of these things that I knew. And then I asked her, forgive me for bringing her here and passing her. You know, and that was some of the things that we immigrants deal with. Yeah. When we come here and you don't have that network, yeah. you don't have the traditional ways of mourning. And sometimes people say, oh, you can do anything, no. When you are praying as an African, anytime you change the prayer from English into your local, local. language, you know God is hearing. And that is how powerful it is when we talk about tradition. Yeah. If you like, pray in your language and then pray in English and see which one is powerful. So that is how tradition is. Yeah. So when my daughter passed away, we took her to a place called Mississauga to bury her. And then when we came back, people said in the evening they have rented a banquet hall, they're going to bring a DJ, and there will be a bar, there will be people dancing. And I said, wait a minute, no. I wasn't there, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. I took my immediate family with me to my house in Hamilton, Ontario. Okay? We had something to eat, and then we began to share stories about my daughter. Yeah. We began to take her back. And I remember I said a prayer that I've got a message from Ghana that my daughter's spirit have arrived. And so when I was saying this thing, people said, what is he talking about? But these are real moments that I was connected to the ancestors, and I believe they said, my daughter's spirit. That's and that was it. where I was comforted. Yeah. So I said, we'll bury the body here, but the, but the spirit, spirit is gone. Is gone. Yeah. So exactly three months, mm -hmm. what happened was they cut her fingernails, some of her hair, and certain things, and they put it in their box, and I took it to Ghana. Ghana. I went to my family home and did a small funeral, and I went to bury those things beside my mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did this. Do you understand? So mm -hmm. my daughter has returned, mm -hmm. and that was what I tried. I mentioned earlier about going through the door of return. Mm -hmm. I've been there. To know that mm -hmm. symbolically mm -hmm. you have yeah. come back. Yeah. You are no more in captivity. Because that is what the baggage, the emotional trauma that we carry yeah. as immigrants or as black people. Mm. The land is very important to yeah, us. Uh, yeah. The land is who we are. Yeah. And out of that land, your language Beautiful. and your name. So my name, Ni, if you mention that name, three letters, it connects me to a people and a place mm -hmm. from which I care. Mm -hmm. So I think that <coughs> With the panel we have here, I think we need to begin the process 
of forming an elderly group okay. yeah. that will visit people who are going through these traumatic oh, experiences yeah. Yeah. and speak to them profoundly based upon who we are. Who we yeah. are. Now, the other professional services is general. General, yeah, I agree. It's very general, but when you get to be somebody coming to speak to me in my Ghana language, I feel like God is speaking. Yeah. And that is powerful. Yeah. When you hear voices speaking in your language yeah. at that difficult moment. Yeah. And so I think one quick thing you said that, uh, you know, taking the body home and many people in the diaspora, that is the challenge. But one piece you said there that uh, even getting some pieces of her, taking that back home, maybe these are some of those things we could say you may not be able to take the whole body back home, yeah. but can we do? I had to take my son from Freetown where he died yeah. to Kabbalah yeah. and bury my son close to my parents. And that because is very important. Yeah, so very I had to do that uh, yeah. because they, uh, I could have done it in Freetown, the capital, but I said, no, I have to take that body back home yeah. Yeah. Uh, because of the importance of it. Yeah. So those are some of the things that we expect us to do moving forward. Yeah. Um, I will be taking my grandchildren to Ghana this year. We are going to visit that shrine. Right. I'm going to take them to yeah. this. I say, speak to your mother. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what you say. We do. Yeah. I have been. Because it's a yeah. spirit. Mm -hmm. And the spirit never die. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the language, the land, the name. We have discussed so much. I personally feel heavy. I, I hope that we can all do what we can to take care of ourselves um, after this conversation. And to all of you, and to all those watching, if you have lost someone special to you, I pray that you take the time to heal. And I pray that you find your African community, have an elder who you can connect with to help you go through that healing process. Um, I want to say a quick shout out to Mrs. Teresa John. Business name is Handmade with Love create, um, Creations by T. You can reach them at 587-930-5188. She makes these beautiful pillowcases and, of course, this beautiful mug. And she took her precious time to donate these to us. We are very grateful for that. Um, thank you all for making time and taking the effort to join us for this conversation. Until our next heavy but relevant conversation, Sabe Sandy Day.